For the first time, the Trump administration appeared to show greater alignment between Washington and Delhi on Pakistan-sponsored terror. Top intelligence officials have warned that Pakistan's refusal to bring the Pathan court attackers to justice was a red flag to India. The firefights along the line of control could escalate. Pakistan's tactical nuclear weapons could be hijacked by terror groups. These are reports coming from the U.S. Intelligence Committee. Here's a report. For the first time, Pakistan under the lens of the Trump administration. America's intelligence brass spelled out to the Senate Intelligence Committee the danger flowing from Islamabad's support of terror groups. Islamabad has failed to curb militants and terrorists in Pakistan. These groups will present a sustained threat to the United States' interests in the region and continue to plan and conduct attacks in India and Afghanistan. Pakistan is also expanding its nuclear arsenal and pursuing tactical nuclear, nuclear weapons, potentially lowering the threshold for their use. But courts also warned that Islamabad's failure to curb support to anti-India militants and New Delhi's growing intolerance of this policy, coupled with the perceived lack of progress in Pakistan's investigations into the January 2016 Pathan Court cross-border attack, set the stage for a deterioration of bilateral relations in 2016. Before a packed committee, courts talked about the increasing number of firefights along the line of control, including the use of artillery and mortars that exacerbated the risk of unintended escalations between the nuclear-armed neighbours. Pakistan is concerned about international isolation and sees its position through the prism of India's rising international status, including India's expanded foreign outreach and deepening ties to the United States. Pakistan will likely turn to China to offset its isolation empowering a relationship that will help Beijing to project influence into the Indian Ocean. Court's testimony does suggest successive visits to Washington by India's national security adviser may have had an impact. Narendra Modi's expected visit to the country in July could help firm up a more proactive policy to tackle Pakistani-sponsored terrorism. Bureau Report, Vyond. And we are being joined by G. Parthasarthi, former uh, High Commissioner to Pakistan and also uh, a seasoned diplomat uh, with me in the studio here. Good evening, sir. We'll also be joined by Michael Kugelman, Senior Associate for South Asia Asia Program at the Woodrow Wilson Center. He will be joining us from Washington in a minute or two. Uh, let me ask you, sir, first. First, the ICJ, now America's very tough position. Is Pakistan increasingly being cornered? Look, I think you should see this in a certain context. Uh, Mr. Trump will be, I think I'm advised by my American friends, announcing uh, his Afghanistan policy, mm. which is going to include uh, a larger American troop presence and asking NATO for more troops uh, at the G7 summit. Uh, so that is coming very soon. In preparation for that, what is interesting is the vi visit of the National Security Advisor, the U.S. National Security Advisor to Afghanistan, India and Pakistan where they have now started grouping this as one. Afghanistan, Pakistan, India to be handled in one context insofar as terrorism and security is concerned. Maritime will be separate. And therefore, this statement, look, I have dealt with U.S.-Pakistan relations in Washington, in the Prime Minister's office, in Karachi, in Islamabad. I have never seen a statement like this that too coming from Daniel Coates, the director of national intelligence, mm. who is the senior most intelligence official who briefs the president. So this is something pretty serious coming at that level. Mm. It is to the Se Senate Select Intelligence Committee. Now, this is what he said in public. What he's going to tell them in private will be much more detailed. Mm. So I think uh, it is a sort of expression of unease that Pakistan's policies, not just India, but both on Afghanistan and India, hmm. are escalating tensions. And in both cases, they, these tensions are fueled by terrorist groups operating out of Pakistan. From what I've seen of Mr. Coates' testimony, he has named the groups. La lashkar e taiba Haqqani Network, Taliban, the works but are most there. of these groups have also been sanctioned by the U.S., have been part of the U.N. So... so is this is this a departure? Is this stronger than what is what we've uh, seen sir, in the past? It, it and goes is this much a precursor beyond, to it, what, it what goes, would come? It goes much beyond what has happened before. Never has the United States that I know of 
categorically held Pakistan responsible for terrorist attack like Pathan Court, hmm. put the blame solely on it, and linked an improvement of relations with India to ending this and investigating that. So this is uh, a far uh, more hardened position. I'm not going to speculate on where it leads because th that is going to depend on the larger, larger unfolding of Trump policy hmm. on the Afghanistan, Pakistan, India triangle. I'm, I'm going to quote uh, from what he said. Uh, he said, Pakistan is concerned about its international isolation due to its dwindling position against India's rising international status, expanded foreign outreach and deepening ties with the U.S. Uh, something on these lines was also expressed by Parvez Musharraf in an interview to me last month, that Pakistan has lost out. Is this to a certain extent also, also a vindication of the Prime Minister's foreign policy and the way he's gone about? To look, uh, look, look, look at what the Prime Minister did. He invited Nawaz Sharif. What did he get? An escalation. He reached out to go to Nawaz Sharif's uh, daughter's marriage mm -hmm. and, in fact, pay homage and obeisance to Nawaz Sharif's mother. What did he get in return? Uri. Pathan Kot. So I think look at it from the, his point of view and what does that project to the world? That here is an Indian prime minister who reached out to them and isn't going to do it again. So I think uh, I view it in this uh, larger context. The details of what happens, how will they go about it, what will be the extent of cooperation remains to be seen. I think the Foreign Secretary had two visits to uh, US yeah. and so did the National Security Advisor. Both appear to have gone off well because that was followed by McMaster, the um, National Security Advisor, undertaking this trilateral initiative of Afghanistan, Pakistan and India because uh, that uh, it's in a completely different context now. Right. Uh, throughout his campaign, Donald Trump said that India is a friend and that Pakistan isn't doing enough and we should probably stop paying it the kind of money we're paying it mm. to curb militancy and terror mm. and so on and so forth. Once he took office, we did not see any visible signs of the action following the words. Do you believe that with this censure, we'll also see some sanctions, some tough talk, some some concrete measures to hold Pakistan I account. can't see the Senate now after this speech to a select intelligence community uh, committee yeah. uh, sanctioning money very liberally to Pakistan I think that 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 will not happen hmm. but uh, le let us wait and see because the US also has a lot of people who say hey we should leave retain some leverage in that country hmm. so how that plays out is going to depend in the coming months and notably what happens in uh, uh, the meeting of the G7 where the NATO allies will be briefed uh, but my own feeling is that um, in the past uh, drone attacks and so on on Pakistan territory mm. were confined to groups attacking Pakistan how that plays out in this period remains to be seen because you've seen the it started off with that uh, immense uh, bomb being dropped very close to the Pakistan border mm. in Nagarar. So uh, let's wait. I wouldn't prejudge this. But the omens, I think Pakistan will have to take serious note of this. Yes. Do you see this as Trump's foreign policy? Do you see uh, the Trump hallmark on, on what has been said and uh, the shift, if it is a shift? Or is this the general realization in the American strategic establishment that whatever we were doing with Pakistan wasn't working and... I think Mr. Obama also was moving in this direction in his last... He started off as being almost neutral and very chummy with the China-Pakistan complex. Mm. Uh, by the end of his term, he had veered in another direction. And it's not that we veered, it was the United States which veered. So I think uh, the uh, we, we will have to see how this plays out. Uh, Mr. Trump is... Uh, not a very predictable person, yeah. and, an and, 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 and therefore I would uh, wait e each step which as it comes. But uh, for, a, for a national director of intelligence of the United States to speak to a select Senate intelligence committee on these terms, I've not seen it before in, in, in the 40 years I've dealt with this. That's, that's a statement if there was ever one. Uh, Michael Kugelman is with us uh, now, I'm told. Uh, uh, Michael, is this an evident shift in America's policy towards Pakistan and is there now political will to hold Pakistan accountable for exporting terror? 
Well, I mean, I've long thought that uh, the Trump administration would take a much harder line uh, toward Pakistan simply because it, uh, you know, it, on the campaign trail, Trump built himself as very strong on terror. He tends to see terrorism in black and white terms, thinking that any terrorist group, regardless of its motivations or whatever the case, uh, you know, de deserves to be dealt with and attacked. So you know, that's why I would think that uh, he and uh, members of his administration would have no patience for, you know, this longtime Pakistani policy of favoring some terror groups over uh, over others. Um, but you know, then again, as one of your other guests just said. You know, Trump is so unpredictable. He's probably the biggest wild card president we've ever had. We just don't know where he's going to be going. So that said, you know, I think that this testimony that we heard on, on Cong uh, in Congress yesterday, which seemed to suggest a uh, very strong desire to um, really push Pakistan to do more than it's ever done before, I think that's significant. Um, that you know, there is a pretty extensive policy review taking place uh, in the administration now. But what to do with uh, in terms of Pakistan policy? I think we'll hear more about Afghanistan before we hear about Pakistan. But I know that there are efforts um, underway in the White House to try to come out with a policy, and I imagine, I imagine it will involve taking a harder line. I know that some in Pakistan were actually hopeful about the Trump administration, particularly because of you know all these comments about him wanting to mediate uh, disputes between India and Pakistan. Mm. I don't think we should put too much stock in that. I think that. This is an administration that will probably take uh, a different position. I'm not going to say that Trump is going to want to sever the relationship with Pakistan altogether, but I think he's just not going to be as patient as previous uh, uh, presidential administrations have been here. I'm also going to quote from what uh, Mr. Court said in his testimony. Pakistan will likely turn to China to offset its isolation, empowering a relationship that will help Beijing to project influence in the Indian Ocean. Is this also a reflection of the realization in Washington of the changing geopolitical equations in this region? Yes, I think it is, though I think that uh, it would be saying too much to suggest that uh, you know Pakistan is trying to forestall uh, getting isolated and things like that. I think the geopolitical dynamics are such that Pakistan accepts the fact that it can't look to the United States in ways that it used to, and that it therefore needs to try to cement its already strong relationship with China, that it also needs to try to build out a deeper relationship with Russia, as it's trying to do, and it needs to uh, build out a better relationship with Turkey. I mean, Pakistan clearly is looking for new friends, but I don't think we should go so far as to say that, uh, you know, that, that means that the U.S.-Pakistan relationship will just wither away. And I'll be quite frank that I think that, um, you know, the powers that be in this town still think it's better to be uh, on Pakistan's good side, so to speak, than on its bad side. And in that regard, I don't think we're going to have these drastic steps that have been suggested by a number of folks in this town, such as, for example, having the U.S. declare Pakistan to be a state sponsor of terror. It would be a pretty dramatic step. And I don't think that uh, uh, the government, even this new government here, is, is, is willing to do that. But certainly, absolutely, there is a realization in Washington that you know, there are some major geopolitical shifts underway in South Asia and Asia on the whole, which means that there simply will be fewer incentives for the U.S. to try to work with Pakistan, to try to make things work better, given that, you know, things are going in different directions. You, the U.S. is trying to uh, uh, build on all the momentum made between the, uh, the Obama uh, team and the Modi team to build out the U.S.-India relationship, and Pakistan is trying to uh, deepen its ties to regional players. So I think in that sense, Many here feel it's not worth the frustration uh, to try to keep dealing with Pakistan on very deep levels, you know, given all these expectations that have fallen short, all this frustration over the last few years. My final question, Michael Kugelman, are we then looking at cutting aid and perhaps even sanctions? Well, you know, the funny thing is a lot of people have just assumed that the Trump administration would cut aid to Pakistan. Uh, and particularly given all these cuts he's proposed for the State Department and for USAID. However, you know, the latest eight figures show that um, uh, uh, in terms of development assistance, civilian assistance, and also security assistance to Pakistan, you know, there haven't been uh, reductions uh, in, in terms of the most, oh, the, the most recent statistics. So if something happens, it'll take time. Um, that said, what I do think will have the big change in the aid area will be that I imagine the U.S. will indeed condition more aid to Pakistan on Pakistan doing more to deal with terror groups like the Haqqani Network. The Obama administration had tended to give the Pakistanis a pass. It basically used a waiver, a national security waiver, in which it said that for reasons of national security, we're not going to condition 
uh, aid to Pakistan. Uh, and I think that was somewhat of a wrong-headed move. And I imagine the Trump administration will insist that you know those waivers not be used, and that the Pakistanis be held to account, and that uh, you know they need to show more evidence of doing more against groups like the Haqqani Network before they can continue to receive unlimited or not unlimited before they continue to receive generous amounts of assistance. Mr. Parthasarthi, India clearly has a leg up right now. How can it build on this? No, I, th I think you'll have to go about this patiently. As our friend has noted, uh, the U.S. will have to attempt to keep some leverage going with Pakistan. Now, in the case of uh, aid, uh, what they have to give in any case is what is called as coalition support funds for American forces using Pakistani soil for supplies and so on and so forth. So. That will continue, though the Obama administration withheld that also. Uh, I would expect, which, uh, which the Obama administration hadn't quite done, is an end to military assistance. Um, the F-16 force has been modernized in recent years and so on. So let us see how that, how, how that goes. But crucial, crucial, in this play, it's Afghanistan, Pakistan. And the Pakistanis are misbehaving very badly. The Afghans are very angry. I meet Afghan friends. I've visited Kabul several times. They're really, really angry. And they, I think that will spill over into uh, this thing, into, into the relationship with the US. Because Trump is not going to tolerate people trained in Pakistan killing American soldiers in Helmand or in northern Afghanistan. Right. Michael Kugelman, uh, Islamabad hasn't responded to the statement yet. How do you expect it to? Well, I imagine it'll uh, it'll respond in the way that it usually responds. When the U.S. or other external players are critical of Pakistan and its policies toward terrorism, it will probably say Pakistan is one of the greatest victims uh, of terrorism uh, and that it has made tremendous progress dealing with its terrorism problem over the, over the last few years and that we call on the United States to help uh, uh, resolve uh, tensions in the region. Um, this is the stock response that one tends to get from the Pakistani government. And it is based in some truth. I mean, let's face it. I mean, even the most hardened critic of Pakistan will must acknowledge that you know, terrorist violence has gone down over the last few years. And that's because the, the terrorist organizations that were causing the most problems in Pakistan have been dealt with, at least for now. But um, you know, I think that you know, the, mo the people in Washington are used to hearing that response and that story from Pakistan. And it's it's you know there's not going to be much much patience uh, or sympathy for that for that argument. The the response from the U.S. will be well, that's great you made all this progress, but it's you need to make a lot more given that uh, you, know, you still have terrorist groups on your soil that directly target U.S. interests, and Americans in Afghanistan, and that of course target uh, others in the region uh, such as such as Indians uh, of course as well. So it'll be a stock response if there is one from Islamabad and, and again I don't think it'll have much sympathy here in Washington. You want to make a point sir? No I, I, I think the uh, the, ba the basic basic issue on this is that the, uh, the US can no longer sort of show that sort of patience. I can't see Mr. Trump watching say a platoon of, 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 of uh, attacked from across the border uh, and sitting quiet. I, I, I think uh, um, there will be a revision of tactics. Drones will be more extensively employed. Let's see how it goes. Right. Uh, I'm going to wrap it with that. Uh, G. Parthasarthi, Michael Kugelman, thanks very much for joining us. Ahead on the show, we're bringing you a ground report from Sri Lanka on Prime Minister Modi's state visit and how it changes equations in this region.